Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Broken Controller Club. I'm your host, Ed, and as always, I'm glad you're back. Be sure to subscribe on your way out the door, or don't. You're only hurting yourself because you're going to miss out on some sweet videos. If present-day Hollywood has a reputation for churning out garbage, you know, then the same can be said for the movie tie-in game industry as they're cut from the same turd-stained cloth. More often than not, movie tie-in games are just expensive cash grabs meant to be advertisements for the movies they loosely follow than actually trying to be, you know, good. Or even complimentary. But one could also say that the movies themselves are just meant to be toy commercials. Look at all the merchandising that comes out months in advance of any new Star Wars, DC, or Marvel movie. Or the toys that came out with the release of movies like Aliens, where most of the cast were introduced to in the beginning are dead by the halfway mark, but they still had action figures made of them. And with that glowing introduction, today I'm taking a look at Jumanji, the video game. So, if you're a parent watching this, number one, my apologies for my juvenile sense of humor as I really am this immature in real life, and number two, as a rule, anything that says the video game as part of the title is not going to be good. The exception to that is the recently re-released Ghostbusters, the video game. That game is insanely good and should be in everybody's library. Jumanji, on the other hand, is not terrible, but they skimped on so much that the game just doesn't have much of anything going for it. In fact, it doesn't really have much of anything at all. So movie notwithstanding, you basically take each of the characters of the movie and search out four jewels, then unlock a gate to go to another area. Then, you run through a hall with some traps while collecting four more jewels. Then, you stand next to a statue to power it up while shooting bad guys. Then you go to the next area, another hall with more traps, and, you guessed it, four more jewels you have to find. Then you shoot bad guys while powering up a statue again. Then you complete the level by walking through one more gate. That's it. That's the whole game. I am not joking. When you fire up the game for the first time, it'll ask you if you want to go through the tutorial first, and some guy who looks like Dax Shepard will guide you through how everything works, and the game doesn't add anything else to it. If you play through the tutorial, that's like 90% of the game. So once again, you can play through the tutorial, return the game, and feel confident that you didn't miss out on anything else. So the game, if you want to call it that, has this same loop throughout four maps. Two of those maps are the same area, but one's at night. So you could argue that it's only three maps. So after you've played through those maps, that's it. All you do then is play the same maps repeatedly to unlock some costumes that are just color swapped versions of what you already have on, and some new weapon skins. And during my playtime, that grind was kind of slow. For something with such simple gameplay, I would figure the grind to go up in rank would have been a little faster to keep players interested, but I guess they went the opposite route to pad the time you'll spend on it. That, folks, was not the route to take. And I have to mention just how bad the AI of your team is. The computer will constantly run in front of you to take shots at enemies, and it really feels like its number one priority is to just stay in front of you at all times. I mean, look at that! I mean, if it were a person, I'd think they were doing this intentionally to make me angry. Also, animals in this are one-hit kills. Didn't run from a hippo in time? Dead. Rhino touch you? Dead. There's no real indication you've been hit, other than that suddenly your screen goes dark and then there's the respawn timer that shows up. Otherwise, they're the only real danger in the game. The enemies aren't particularly bright, and if they're not shooting at you from behind cover, they'll run out at you as if they want you to shoot them in the face to get them out of the game. We figured out that on easy and medium difficulty, you could actually just run through the traps without really trying to dodge anything, and you won't die. And the health packs at the end of each trap hall give you enough health to do it all over again. So does anything in this work? Well, functionally, the game isn't terrible. The gameplay is simple enough and controls fine. The graphics are colorful and have a slightly cartoony feel to them, and they mostly got the looks of the actors pretty well. They still look slightly different, but that didn't really bug me. The Rock and Kevin Hart both have this look on their faces, though, like they gambled and lost. The original actors didn't voice their characters, which nobody should be surprised at because it would have been obscenely expensive, though the voice actors that played them did do a good job, at least in my opinion. Or maybe it's just that easy to impersonate Jack Black and Kevin Hart. I could go either way there. I do want to point out that you'll hear the same four to five phrases from them throughout each game session regardless. Be prepared to hear each character complain about their weapon power-ups going away 
at least a dozen times each time you play. Joel stopped powering my weapon. Weapon power's gone. Sad face. So, I gave it a score, but does it even matter at this point? I guess the nicest thing I can say about the game is that it's so easy that if you have little kids that want to play it and like couch co-op games, there's no real violence in this, and it's simple enough to teach them some teamwork and they'll like the colorful graphics. But if you're an adult, please give it a pass. You're not getting some story-based movie game or some version of the Jumanji board game or whatnot. You're getting something that actually probably started as a decent concept for a couch co-op game and then two hours later was finished and sent to the publisher. Or maybe they accidentally sent the demo to the publisher and decided to just not say anything out of embarrassment. That's about all I have for today though, adventurers. This is Ed with the Broken Controller Club reminding you to not fight with other shoppers this holiday season if you can help it, and maybe take some time to donate to those this season who don't have very much for the holidays. Just, that's not giving you approval to donate this game to them. That's not what I meant. That's a Scrooge move and you will be visited by Three Spirits Christmas Eve if you do that. Take care everybody, until next time. Do you like what you see? Or did you lose a bet and have to subscribe to your most hated channel on YouTube? Do you feel sorry for me? Be sure to ding that sexy subscribe button before changing channels as I have no shame, we'll take whatever I can get. Thanks again for watching.